Shalom and blessings. Welcome to Picking Up the Mantle, right here on the Elisha Calling. Today we've got a beautiful word for your life, a word that is a now word, a word that we believe here on the Elisha Calling will be a blessing for your life, and it's a word that all of us need to hear. So we want to invite you to stick around for this episode of Picking Up the Mantle as we seek to discover what are the purifying waters. Welcome. Welcome to Picking Up the Mantle. Something that the Lord's been laying on our hearts here at the Elisha Calling is a very important word that we felt we needed to release at this time. Now, there's a lot of people talking about the purifying waters. There's a lot of people talking about how we need to be purified in this season. So we wanted to do our part to support that message and to bring forth a word that we believe is a word for today it's a word for tomorrow, and it's a word that will carry us into our future with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's about the purifying waters. You see, right now, across the whole earth, we're experiencing something that is unlike anything that we have ever seen before. We read about an example of a time that happened very similar to this, in the Word of God, and it comes to us from the story of Noah. During the time of Noah, Noah was doing his best to seek the Lord. Noah was trying to live a life that was righteous and holy before God. But you see, the whole earth around him was contaminated. It was full of wickedness, and it was full of evil. There was no end to the evil. And this evil came up before God, and God was grieved in his heart. So he spoke to Noah, and he said, Noah, I'm going to cleanse the earth of all of this wickedness. I'm going to cleanse the earth of all this evil. But you have found favor in my sight, and I'm going to save you and your family, but I'm going to cleanse the whole earth. So that's where we're going to pick up today. We're going to start in the book of Genesis. And we're going to read Genesis chapter 7, verse 4. It says, For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth forty days and forty nights. And I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. This is what the Lord spoke to Noah. He said, Noah... The wickedness is so great upon all the earth that I have no choice but to cleanse the earth of its wickedness. So God sent rain. He sent water. And he used that water to purify the earth. You see, whenever you see water talked about in the Bible, it represents a cleansing. It represents a purification. We read about this in the New Testament when we hear about Jesus. Jesus, when he was baptized by John, John's baptism represented a purification. And if Jesus, he had no sin, so he didn't need to be purified from sin, but he was entering into his high priest ministry. He was going to minister as the high priest of our salvation, so he needed to go through that purification process that every priest went through. So Jesus, the water came into his life, purified him so he could enter into that priestly ministry. You also read about it in examples of the Old Testament. You talk about, we read, we read about how when um, people wanted to be cleansed from sin, iniquity, and leprosy, a bird was sacrificed and that bird was placed into living waters. And that waters mixed with the blood of the bird was used to purify. This is a prophetic representation of 
Yeshua, Jesus, on the cross when the soldier stabbed him in the side and water and blood gushed forth. The blood cleansed us from our sins. The water represents purification of our lives, the purification work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So you see, water is used throughout the Bible as a purification agent. Now, in the days of Noah, God sent actual water upon the earth to cleanse the earth, to wash the earth, to give the earth a new beginning, and he was going to bring that new beginning through Noah and his family from inside the ark. But the Lord also gave a promise. He said, Noah, never again will I destroy the earth with water. He said, I'm not going to cover the earth with water again. So if God was not going to cleanse the earth with water, if he wasn't going to flood the earth with water to cleanse the earth, how then in this day, in the day that we are living, is God going to cleanse the earth? How is he going to cleanse our lives and our hearts? You see, we're in the midst of a severe situation. If we're in the middle of a situation that man is trying to fix, doctors, scientists, politicians, they're trying to solve this situation through their own efforts, but they're missing the clue. They're missing the one thing that they need to receive the answer to the situation we're going through. They're missing the purifying waters, God's purifying waters. So what are those purifying waters in this season? Well, we can find the answer in Ephesians chapter 5. Come with me to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. It says that he might sanctify and cleanse her. This is the Apostle Paul instructing the people in Ephesus about how a husband is going to sanctify his wife. Or better yet, this was a representation of how Jesus Christ was going to purify his bride. And Paul here is using the illustration of a husband and a wife. He says that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. You see, today, God doesn't want to, or he's not cleansing the earth with a physical water. But he is desiring to cleanse the earth, and he's desiring to cleanse our hearts by the washing of the water of his word. You see, this right here is the word of God. And it has the power to cleanse us. And how does it do that? Well, it confronts our sin. It reveals areas in our lives where we have sin. The word of God gives us instructions on how to live a holy and righteous and pure life before God. The Word of God has the power to confront us, to transform us, to change us so that we can walk in righteousness and holiness. You see, our God is not a cruel God. He is not looking to punish any of us. He's looking to purify us. He's looking to cleanse us so that we can receive his blessings and we can, more importantly, receive our eternal salvation through Yeshua. You see, the word of God is a tutor. In other words, it leads us to the fact that we need Yeshua, Jesus Christ, in our lives. When we're confronted by the word of God, it reveals our wickedness, it reveals our sin, and it makes us recognize that we need a Savior. And then God has done the most amazing thing. He's provided a Savior. He's provided a lamb, a Passover lamb, that takes away our sins and delivers us out of the captivity of Egypt, our sin and our sickness. He's given us that Passover lamb who is Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. You see, we have become so far away from the Word of God. 
We just need to look at the news. We need to look around at the, the things that are happening around us, the violence that is increasing more and more every day. We know this is opposite to God's Word because God's Word teaches us that we need to love our neighbors as ourselves. If we loved our neighbors as ourselves, then violence would be far from us. We would want to be a blessing to our neighbor instead of trying to take what our neighbor has. We would, want to see, we would see our neighbor in need, and we would want to help our neighbor instead of trying to push them down even further or mock them and ridicule them. You see, the Word of God is what instructs us in that. The Word of God teaches us and reveals to us that we need to be transformed, that we need the saving power of Jesus Christ to come into our lives so that the door could be open for us to receive Holy Spirit who teaches us and instructs us in the Word of God. It is Holy Spirit that helps us to follow God's law and God's instructions from Genesis to Revelation. So I encourage each of you today, no matter what you're going through, seek out your answer from the Word of God. You see, every answer we need can be found right here. There are verses in this Bible. There's verses here and instructions that talk about healing. There are verses and promises here that talk about transformation. There's verses that help to bring healing to our mind and help us think and according to God's Word. And when we align with God's Word, then healing comes to our soul. The Word of God teaches us that there is healing found through the promises of God. Isaiah 53 talks about Jesus Christ, talks about how He was wounded for our transgressions and that by His stripes we are healed. What does that mean? Jesus Christ was beaten. He was whipped. He was crucified and shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. So when it says that by his stripes we are healed, it's when we look upon Jesus Christ, the crucified Passover lamb. And when we see his resurrection, it's a call for us to repent of our sins through Jesus Christ so that we can receive the healing that we need, not only for our physical bodies, but for our souls and for our minds. But if we don't know the Word of God, if we don't follow the Word of God, those blessings and many, many more never come to our lives because we don't understand that we're not in alignment with God's Word. You see, there's a major problem that all of us face in this season, and that problem is pride. Pride won't allow us to be humble before God, and it won't allow us to let the Word of God confront and challenge us. That pride tends to keep us locked in our own way of thinking, and it doesn't allow us to see God's Word for what it truly is. It is His truth. It is His instructions for our lives. And some of those instructions bring correction. But because of our pride and our rebellion, we don't want to see that. We don't want to recognize it. We don't want to let the Word of God confront us and challenge us. I want to encourage each of you hearing this message today. Let go of the pride. Be humble before God and allow the Word of God to confront and challenge you. I know in this past season... The Word of God has been really challenging me in many areas. Recently, my faith has been really shaken to the core through a situation that I've been dealing with in my family. Now, those of you that are close to the ministry, you know this situation. And this is a very challenging situation. But at the most desperate times, at the time that I was feeling my faith was being pushed down and challenged, it was the Word of God that brought hope and encouragement. God reminded me 
of Ephesians 2.10 that said, I am his creation and I've been created through Christ Jesus to do good works. So I was reminded that my life needs to bear fruit for his kingdom, fruit in the midst of that situation. I was reminded that from his word of God, from Philippians, that in Christ Jesus, I can do all things. That even the situation that I was facing with my family, that if I relied on Christ Jesus, I could get through it and I could do it. So it was the word of God that brought hope. It was the word of God that aligned me to God's plan and purposes. And that promise that came to my life is the same promise that I'm releasing to you today. That when you turn to the word of God, when you allow the word of God to confront you and challenge you, it will transform you and it will give you the strength and the power that you need to overcome. Without the word of God, we are lost. Without the word of God, we begin to see all those things that are happening in our nations today. We begin to see sicknesses and diseases increase. We begin to see violence and rebellion against authorities and our neighbor increase because we have allowed our societies to remove the word of God from our midst. Throughout history, you can see the greatest nations on the face of this earth starting with Israel, starting or going next to the United States. These nations were blessed abundantly and they became the most blessed nations on the face of the earth and they became a blessing to others. Why? Not because of who we are, not because of anything that we've done. It's because Israel and the U.S. were founded on the word of God. That's why you see them blessed. But it breaks my heart today as a, as a member of the United States, as a citizen of the United States, to see how far my nation has turned from the Word of God. You used to hear about the United States. Oh, they have the top military. They have the top uh, um, um, economy. They have the top medicine. Why? Because we were a nation founded on the word of God. But here today, what are you hearing? You hear about the violence. You hear about how right now this nation is the leading nation with COVID, with uh, infections of COVID. Why? Because we have turned away from the word of God and we have removed the word of God from our society, from the very fabric of our foundation. Today, I feel the Lord is sending out a call to the nations to receive your blessings, return to the Word of God, and let the Word of God be the foundation of everything that you do. And that's the word to you today. We need to allow the purifying waters of the Word of God to cleanse us from right, unrighteousness, to cleanse us from evil and wickedness. We need to allow the word of God to confront our sin and reveal the sin in our hearts so that we would recognize that we are in desperate need of a Messiah. And that Messiah has already been given. His name is Jesus Christ. Yeshua in Hebrew. Many people ask me, when do I think COVID will end? Many people ask me, when do you think we will see the violence come down? When do you think we will see our nation return to the days of prosperity that we once enjoyed? My answer to them is when we return to the Word of God. That is our only hope. That is our only answer. And that word of God leads us to one place and one place only. It leads us to repentance. And it leads us to cry out for our Messiah, Yeshua. We need to return to the word of God. 
We need to allow the purifying waters of God's word to wash us and cleanse us so that we can receive our Messiah with joy. I don't know when Yeshua is coming back for his second time. It could be tomorrow, could be next week, could be another year or 10 years from now. I don't know. The word of God tells us no one knows the day nor the hour. But what I can tell you is that today we are one day closer than we were yesterday. Can you take the risk of the possibility of Jesus returning tomorrow without repenting of your sins? Can you take that risk of him returning tomorrow to claim his bride from this earth and leaving you behind because you've not received Jesus in your heart? So I want to pause here for a moment. And I want to, I want to invite each one of you that has not received Jesus in your heart, who has not confessed that you are a sinner and you need saving, I want to invite you right now. Pray this prayer with me right now. I recognize that I need help. I recognize that in the midst of my situation, I need an answer. And that answer comes in the form of Jesus Christ. So I, I renounce to my sin today. I ask forgiveness for my sins right now. I don't want to risk losing that opportunity to go with Jesus when he comes back. I don't want to miss that chance, so I repent of my sins. I ask forgiveness for my sins today, and I ask you, Jesus, come into my heart today. Send your word to confront my sin. Send your word to teach me how to walk as you walk. So I receive you today, repenting of my sins, and I ask you, Lord Jesus, come and be Lord of my life. I pray these things in the name of Jesus. I believe that as you prayed that, that through faith, you are saved. But now you need to let the word of God confront you and challenge you. I want to invite you, if you don't have a Bible, go get a Bible as soon as you can. We don't know how long we will be able to have access to this. For English, I recommend the King James Version or the New King James Version. In Spanish, I recommend Reina Valeria 1960. Those are the closest that I have found personally to the original scriptures as they were written in Hebrew and Greek. That's my recommendation. You pray and seek the Lord. But without this word of God, we are lost. We have no hope. But with the word of God, we find hope. We find encouragement. We find strength. We find our way to Jesus Christ, who then sends his Holy Spirit to dwell within us and teach us and guide us and strengthen us through God's word. You see, Jesus Christ came for you, for me, for everybody. And John chapter 1 tells us, that Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh. He is the embodiment of God's Word because He lived according to God's Word. He lived according to the instructions of God. He is God's living Torah. And He preached a message. He preached a message of repentance and He preached a message of of holiness based on the Word of God. So I want to encourage each of you today listening, get into the Word of God. Make it a priority in your life to seek out God through His Word. Make it a priority in your life to read the Word every day, even if it's just one verse. Make it a priority to fill your life with the Word of God and allow the waters, the purifying waters of God's word to cleanse you and cover you. Now here on the Elisha Calling, 
we always like to leave you with a blessing. We always like to leave you with hope and encouragement. So today, we're going to look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. Look at this powerful blessing that comes to our lives when we allow the Word of God to cleanse us. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. It says, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Verse 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. I'm going to leave this verse up here for a minute as we talk about it. It talks about vessels of honor and dishonor. If we cleanse ourselves, if we allow the Word of God to cleanse us, the purifying waters of God's Word to cleanse us, we are cleansed from all dishonor, and we become vessels of honor. But not only that, it says that we are sanctified, and we become useful to the Master. Who is that Master? Jesus Christ, our Father in heaven. I don't know about you, but I want to be useful for my God and my Father. I want to be useful for Jesus Christ. Because Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that each of us have been prepared through Christ Jesus, whether you've accepted Him just now today or whether you've been walking him for, with Him for 50 years. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. He has prepared good works for all of us. And it says right here that if we allow ourselves to be cleansed, then we are prepared to be able to fulfill those good works, that good plan that God has for our lives. What a blessing it is to know that God has a plan for your life. What a blessing it is to know that you are a pleasant offering to your master in heaven, God, your father. And what a blessing it is to know that when we allow the purifying waters of God's word to cleanse us and wash us and transform our minds, we become a useful instrument in God's hand to be a blessing to our families, our nations, our cities. So we want to bless you today. We want to encourage you today. And we want to close today praying for each one of you. So, Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus for every person watching this program. I pray, Father, that the purifying waters of your Holy Spirit, the purifying waters of your Word, bringing revelation through your Holy Spirit, would wash over each one today. Father, as your word purifies our hearts, as your word transforms and purifies and cleanses our minds, Lord, I pray, Father, that you would prepare each one for the work that you have established in heaven for their lives. Father, I pray that each one would be a blessing for your kingdom. Father, help them through your word to be transformed, to be equipped, and to be strengthened, to be encouraged. Father, let your word wash us and cleanse us so that we could be holy and righteous before you, almighty God. Father, we bless your people today. We give you thanks and praise for each of their lives. In the name of our Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah. We bless you today. We thank you for being part of this program today. As we close, we want to invite you to make sure you go to our YouTube channel, like, subscribe, comment. Put your prayer request in the comments. We read those comments, and we have a team of intercessors at Alba Ministries that will pray for each one of those. If you're watching us through Facebook, make sure you go to the Elisha Calling Facebook page. Give it a like and a thumbs up. Give this video a thumbs up. And in the comment sections of this video, put your prayer requests. Or if you don't want them to be public, no problem. Instant message us through Facebook. Send us a private message with your prayer request. We would love to pray for you. 
So we want to just encourage you. We want to bless you. And we give thanks to the Lord for your lives and for all that he has prepared for you. Be blessed from the Elisha Calling.